Welcome back to the Sub Me In podcast. I believe this is, let me check what this is real good, real quick. I forgot. It's been a while. I think it was like two weeks, two weeks, three weeks that I hadn't done a Sub Me In. And this is episode number 27. Sub Me In number 27. Welcome back to the number. Ugh. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, it was on purpose. I didn't do it like, uh, you know, like I forgot or something or like, um, you know, like. <laughs> All right, real quick. It, you're probably going to be hearing barking. That's, uh, that's Anna. She's upstairs. She's, uh, I, I think I left the window open. Well, the curtain's open. So she's probably barking at everything she sees outside but uh, back to it get back to like why I haven't done a sub me in um, in two weeks I believe two to three weeks it was just like the end of the year it was the end of the uh, coming to the end of the year and like the beginning of the sub me in podcast was just like to figure out what direction I wanted it to go and I think I think I've got a pretty good idea of where I want it to go right now so it's gonna be different now um, I will not be doing leagues in the beginning of the you know recapping leagues or anything if anything happens or towards the end we will go back to uh, seeing what's going on with the leagues if anything big happens or major cups you know think major tournaments are going on we will go and talk about them in like the soccer talk of the big part, the soccer part of the podcast. But other than that, we will just be keeping up with stories from now on, just like what's going on, like news pretty much in the world of football or soccer. And then, you know, we will also, I'll be, you know, doing, it's pretty much it. This podcast is going to be pretty much about news, whatever's going on in the world. Um, elsewhere as well, you know, in music, uh, gaming, uh, movies or TV, entertainment pretty much. You know, I want to focus on those areas just because uh, it's usually the stuff that I, um, I, I'm more into. So, you know, I always like to pay attention to what's going on around, you know, what's hot, what's not. <laughs> and then... Um, and if anything, anything crazy happens, like weird news, sure, we'll, I'll probably, if I, if I see anything on it, then, you know, we'll talk about it, yeah, we'll see what happens, opinions, you know, see what I think about it, hopefully, eventually, people can tell me what they think about the stuff that's going on, um, oh man, my contacts, it's bothering me, but yeah, you're probably gonna hear a lot of constant barking, because Anna is a corgi, and... Corgis like to bark at everything. <laughs> so hopefully she's tired. She gets tired and she just like falls asleep or something or she finally sees that there's food in her bowl that she'll go eat and she'll calm down a bit. I even put music up there. So if you hear a little bit of background music, um, that's her music for her to try to calm down that I have for her. But uh, anyways, let's move on with this, with the podcast what's going on um for first and foremost like always um there is an itunes version there yeah, i'm gonna be posting once again with the itunes versions of the podcast just so for those who you know are just want to listen on the on, on the way to somewhere you know driving they just want to pop it in or something they want to listen to it or you know like during break from from classes or break at work, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, the reason I am not doing the leak recaps anymore is to keep it under, try to keep it under like 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. So that's the change. There will be changes in the future as well going on. Fourth most is just like, you know, this is what we got so far. But uh, what would I have so far? And we'll, keep, we'll see how it goes. 
Anyway, so we won't waste any more time. Let's let's move on with the cyber talk. What I like to call <laughs> cyber talk. There is no more cyber talk anymore. Um, all football. Let's just go with all football. I don't know. First thing is I want to talk about Gareth Bale. Just a quick, like you know, when you got what what anybody thinks, uh, Gareth Bale. You know, when he came into Real Madrid, it was a huge deal. I know for me, it was like, you know, I was excited. Since I am a Real Madrid fan, I was excited to see Griff Bell come in into Real Madrid when he was first signed. And, I mean, he was great. He's a great player, you know? So I want to know, is it, is his deal a huge mistake for Real Madrid? Like was is it was it a mistake for Real Madrid to sign him? I remember right off the bat he would always I felt like he was overshadowed by uh Ronaldo and he didn't get to like prove himself, you know, he prove his how great he is because Ronaldo was in Real Madrid. So now that Ronaldo is gone How come Real Madrid is still not performing well? Which we talk, we will talk about that as well. You know, he has now he has the opportunity. Gareth Bale has the opportunity now to, you know, show what he always wanted to show that he's he's great. You know, he's good. He's a good player. And now that Ronaldo's gone, he can do that. He is. Well, they were saying that he would have been. It would have been fine without Ronaldo because they still had Bale and other players like Modric. But uh, I mean, he hasn't shown it. He hasn't shown it. Now that Ronaldo's gone, he hasn't shown that. You know, he's this great footballer that he always said he was. So it was it a mistake for for Real Madrid to sign him? I want to know. It's just a quick. It's just a question for you know if anybody's viewing and they want to want to. Talk about it, but like, here are some statistics, statistics that I found. He's had 18 injuries. This is since like 2013, since he signed from in 2013. He's had 18 injuries and he's been out for 323 days. And he's missed 65 games. So like, with that in mind... I just want to know, was it a mistake? He's won La Liga once, Champions League four times, and he scored many important goals. So yeah, I, I just said like a bunch of downside, like cons with like his injuries and days out and missed games, but those are some positives. He's scored many important goals, okay? So it's like, Plus, I, I said um, that his bicycle kick in the in the that was nominated for I don't know if it was nominated, but it should have been the winner of the Puskas Award instead of uh, Salas. That was my opinion. So that's the question: <sighs> Has he lived up to his potential? Was was it a mistake for Real Madrid to sign him? Now let's talk about Real Madrid. Uh, the last, the past week, the last weekend, or the weekend that just passed, like this past weekend, Real Madrid lost two to nothing against Real Sociedad. <laughs> and I predicted, uh, you know, before the game was was a uh, for the game, I was like, you know, I like to make predictions, like how do I think the games are gonna. How they're going to end. And I said that it would have been an easy win for Real Madrid. Apparently it wasn't though. So let's talk a little bit of, let's talk a little bit of, of things. Like, like things we know, things we learn. Uh, first is the new signee. That they signed Vinicius. 
Uh, he's the young player in Real Madrid. They uh, pretty much just signed him because they saw potential in him. And uh, they pretty much said, it's something I would have done. It's something I would do as a coach where I, if I see a young player and I, I see potential, I'm going to sign him. You know, Real Madrid had a, a similar situation where they could have signed Neymar when he was young, but they didn't because they weren't like, what do you say, convinced, I want to say. Probably they weren't convinced, you know. So they missed out on the opportunity and... and I think that's what Barcelona. Yeah, that's when Barcelona took that took Neymar, and I mean Neymar right now is probably, even though he is, you know, it's controversial. It's pretty opinionated. It's like, you know, he flops so much, but I mean he is still a great player, and uh, he is probably one of the most valuable players right now out there in the world, in the world of football. <laughs> so. This situation came up to the Real Madrid again with, uh, what was his name, Vinicius? Yeah, Vinicius Jr. So they took the chance and they signed him right away. And he's supposed to be the future of Real Madrid. He's supposed to be Ronaldo's, like the future Ronaldo for them. Like the king for Real Madrid. And I feel like, I feel like they put too much pressure on him. Yes, I... I if I was a coach, I'd probably sign a young player as well like that. Like, I remember when I would play FIFA, you know, career mode, I'd look for um, young bucks and I'd put them in the squad, you know, to grow them. But there's a difference from that to, to helping them grow into putting all the pressure on him to be the leader. You know, I don't think they can do that. Um, they'll probably, like, burn them out, you know. And then he's just gonna, they'll break him pretty, pretty much. They'll break him. So, I think they're putting too much hope on him. I think they're, like, too, too putting too much pressure on him. So, that's just like something I feel like that. Yeah, that's just something I feel like they're doing wrong right there. Um, another thing is I don't know what I see either something with their counters that I saw in the game or on the highlights um, yeah Marcelo Marcelo has, like I've noticed that he's not that great of a defender. He is mostly known for, uh, honestly I see Marcelo as like someone who, he's in a defense position, like he's in a defensive position, but he's, he's better to use to score, you know what I mean? Like his goals are more, I, I, I've, I've noticed him more for when he scores goals than when he defends. <laughs> if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. Like, um, Let me see. Sorry, look at my notes here. Let's see what they're saying. Marcelo being a bad def yeah, Marcelo being a bad defender, but good at attacking. But uh, when you go when you have a defender like that, he plays defense position, and then then he's out there attacking. That leaves you know the the, the, the defense. Why am I stuttering? That leaves the defense open. So that's like something bad. Like that just gave um, huge opportunities for. Real Sociedad, in that game specifically for Real Sociedad to, to make more plays, you know. That's what I mean as well by, uh, I 
That's what I mean by when uh, when I say that. They're hot and cold on counters. Like the counters are like. It's um. Sometimes Real Madrid is good at countering, but sometimes like they're not. But like at this point, they they like. They made it like they also kind of made them look bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean. I don't even know what I'm saying, you know? Um, but it's like Marcelo is more like the defensive, the defender. For, uh, he's more like Luka Modric. The defender of Luka Modric. You know what I mean? No, that doesn't make sense, right? All right, so you know how Luka Modric is the playmaker? For Real Madrid right now, that's like Marcelo, but under the defensive for the, the defenders. But like when he goes up front for the attack or to make plays, like that leaves um, leaves them wide open, which is what Real Sociedad in that game specifically Real Sociedad was able to do. They were able to uh, make more more attacks. Because of Marcelo's bad defending. Because he's a bad defender, pretty much. That's what I'm just trying to say. I'm just trying to say that Marcelo's a bad defender. He's a good attacker, but a bad defender. And then that just leaves, like, what, what were they playing with? Like, a four defenders or something? That leaves, like, everybody else, like, trying to... Trying to do double the work. Which, in turn, which in turn may pretty much... Um, will confuse the defense if Marcelo like Marcelo d leaves him alone but uh but yeah another thing is that um hey I'm trying to skim through this real quick All right, let's just talk about, um, other than that, like, uh, Real Madrid's de defense. I think Courtois said something about that, the, the defense as well. But I can't remember. I thought I saw it in one of his uh, comments. Yeah, Courtois, again, like, should he be benched and just, and, and Real Madrid should just, uh, like, play Navas from now on? Let, let him start. Yeah, I think even, uh, all right. I don't know. We'll talk about Coutinho later. But uh, fourth thing I wanted to say was about William Jose. This guy was someone that Real Madrid missed on. I think in the summer, Lopetegui was, uh, he was trying to get him. He was trying to sign him to Real Madrid, but, uh, they didn't let him, I guess. I don't know. I don't think they let him. And they missed out on him. But uh, So he stayed in Real Sociedad. Or Real Sociedad. I don't know. But he was playing. He was, he was in there. He was, you know. He was their guy now. And uh, I believe he scored a goal. And he assisted one. Which he was pretty much the man. The, the man why they won that game. He's the reason they won. He's the one that got them to win. Because, like I said, Real Madrid's defense was bad. And they were allow allowing Real Sociedad to attack more. And honestly, I feel like they could have scored more. But, I mean, it's it was the Real Madrid, you know. But if it wasn't, but if it wasn't for this guy, like... Um, yeah, I don't even know, man. He's the one that, I mean, he's just the reason why, why they won. I mean, it's like, Lopetegui tried getting him. 
and he was denied the chance to bring him. I think he was supposed to be the replacement for Cristiano Ronaldo or something. But, uh... We had Real Madrid being like... I don't know what the what, what they were thinking, but... They didn't take him, and... He is a proven goal scorer with enough creativity to function in a side like Real Madrid. He's, sh he's shown he can play in a possession system and a countering system, and moreover, he likes big games too. So, I mean, this guy was. He was like the chief orchestra of Real Madrid's demise. Uh, yeah, he scored the penalty. There you go. So, he scored the penalty, and then he. He gave the assist to Ruben Pardo. So you close the game, and I mean, like I said, he was the reason they won. We and Jose, remember that. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing, Real Madrid have his okay. So, so, so let's just go like this. Uh, just a few months ago, we were talking about Manchester United having issues and problems, and now it's Real Madrid. You know, and even though Real Madrid has like so many world class players right now, like it's a good team, it's not a bad team, it's just, it's just like <laughs> they're not pulling their weight, you know. Like, like I, like I said earlier, is signing Gareth Bell was Gareth signing Gareth Bell a, a big mistake for them because he looks. Pretty uninterested in being a Real Madrid, being Real Madrid's new talisman, even though he has all the ability, if not the ligaments, to do so. Isco's form has dropped off a cliff. Without Luka Modric's genius, Tony Cruz and Casemiro are suddenly being exposed in ways they had prayed would never happen. Rafa Barane has the mother of all World Cup hangovers, and this is in turn has made Sergio Ramos lack of defense because his consistency a major issue. Dani Carvajal has often been Madrid's consistent presence and tone setter has been racked by injury and looked a shadow of his former self. Michael Llorente brought a sense of order to midfield, but he's got an injury. And then, yeah, Vinicius has skill, but he's he's too young to be to put like all the pressure on him. So like. Everybody in the squad is just like, like, I don't know what's going on with them, but like, it's just like, no one's in sync, pretty much. No one is, uh, if I feel like no one's in the same, no one is in the, like, in the same page. I'm like, what to, I'm what their job is supposed to, what, what they're supposed to be doing. So like, what does what does Real Madrid need to do? You know, I'm thinking, you know, they were on the, I mean, Hazard was saying he he's down to go to Real Madrid, so maybe they can, maybe they can like, for sure, they can take they can they need to buy Hazard. They need to sell Benzema. Um, I mean. I'm questioning Bale, but uh, I don't know what you guys think. Should they sell Bale? And even though, you know, they have supposedly the best player in the world right now, Modric. I mean, what do you guys think? Maybe sell, maybe sell Isco and Asensio. For sure, Benzema. Maybe Isco and Asensio. Um, I don't know about Bill and Modric yet. You know, they're still. I th I still think they're good players. Um, but they can use that money from those three guys, and they can buy Hazard for sure. Maybe a Cardi. They could try to take a Cardi. I mean, Salah would be do would be good, but I, I doubt Salah would leave uh, Liverpool. 
And let's see. They want another striker instead of Benzema. Why well, it's either Icardi or Kane, honestly. One of the two one of the two. So they can sell like those three guys, use that money to buy a new striker, someone like Icardi, Harry Kane or Harry Kane. Um for sure Hazard. But if they have Hazard, like why would they need a... Well, they can still keep Bale, you know. Well, Bale's questionable. Bale is questionable because he says he wants to, uh, he wanted to prove himself, but, you know, he hasn't. Uh, Luka Modric is still questionable as well. You know, he's at that age where he's getting to that age. But for sure, the, I, I feel like for sure, Benzema, Isco, and I said, I don't know, what do you guys think? And then I was talking about Courtois and Navas. Should they just keep, you know, Navas has had more experience in La Liga. Maybe they should keep him as starter for now. Let Courtois get used to the Spanish league. And then maybe next season he could be a starter. Those are, those are a few things. But for sure, they need to work on getting Hazard, Icardi, or Kane. And, I mean, Salah would be good, but I doubt that's possible, you know. I don't know, what do you guys think? What can Real Madrid do to, to, to help him improve, you know? It's got to do something with rebuilding the team. They can't just, like, sack a coach or something and then hope for the best, but they need to, I feel like they need to rebuild the team. What about Pogba? Maybe Pogba. <laughs> I don't know. What do we have now? There's something up there. <laughs> Seems like Anna has not quieted down yet, but that's all right. Let's see what we got. Something that happened in the halftime of the CFP National Championship game between Alabama and Clemson. That's football, right? <laughs> like the American football? Not the football that I'm used to but all right so if anybody saw that Imagine Dragons performed in the halftime show and this is where America learns that Imagine Dragons is a terrible band It's not news. <laughs> Alright, so I got this article pulled up right here. Um, it's just on Yahoo. So let's see what it says. But it caught much of America off guard on Monday when the country's favorite commercial jingle writers full rock and roll band bombed in their performance during halftime of the CFP national championship game between Alabama and Clemson. Many know Imagine Dragons from commercials. Most of the television watching populace is familiar with with their hook Latin soulless music that is commonly used to shill phones, cars, and other popular consumer items. But when they took to the stage Monday night, people were caught off were caught off guard as they were present presented as an actual band. Fans of the stadium were forced to endure the noise. They were spared the show. It actually took place on an island about 45 minutes away from Levi Stadium. But people at home watched on TV and they weren't pleased. Unfortunately, I didn't watch the game. I was working, so I didn't see that at all. But we got a couple of stuff. Tweets. <laughs> Tweets as always. Um... 
not just what the status quo tweeted. I'm not sure if I can ever forgive ESPN for making me watch Imaginaries before seeing the Captain Marvel footage. Really just sick and wrong. Which we'll, be, we'll talk about Captain Marvel as well in just a bit. But that's what he tweeted. Hashtag Captain Marvel footage. James Shaver. Well, you know, the lead singer for Imagine Dragons is in, slip, is in lip singing after that falsetto portion of whatever song this is. Pitchy for the extreme, bruh. <laughs> Two Scalooza's Cigar Shop, R&R Cigars. Who decided Imagine Dragons was a good idea? Mark Barrington said, tweeted, Imagine Dragons? Question mark. What's the secret of their success? Question mark. Their music seems rather lame. Okay, Taco Bar, the musical talent of Magic Dragons, hashtag, things I overestimated. This one's got a radio, so it's the one with the kid who's just like, you know. I thought he's doing, he's holding, he's holding a cup, little black kid, he's just like, And he said, me listening to this Imagine Dragons halftime show with that gif. Mike Martin tweeted, just me? Question mark, or Imagine Dragons isn't sounding so good. Is Imagine Dragons this generation's Nickelback? Question mark. Tweeted by Nathan. So there's a bunch of tweets here. Huh. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if I can find a couple of those. Some of those are just like, eh. They're a little eh. Um, here, this one. Lonely Vegas tweeted, So we went from Kendrick Lamar last year to Imagine Dragons. Hashtag the national championship. Alright, but check this out. That's not the only thing that just happened there. Am I losing my voice? So the performance was given a jolt of hope when Lil Wayne arrived on stage. I remember seeing this yesterday. Or when I was working. But all that really accomplished was an opportunity for people to make fun of his attire. Yeah, he looked... I don't know what he was wearing, man. It was just like crazy. So people then started tweeting about Lil Wayne. Like Mr. Robot here says, Lil Wayne, also known as, well, aka one of the original players from the Himalayas. And then he got compared to a hamburger, which, if you're wondering how he looked like, if you did, if you, you haven't seen a picture of him, that's exactly pretty much how he looks like. <laughs> and John. John Sable tweeted, who wore it better, Lil Wayne or the Hamburglar? Hashtag National Championship. And somebody actually tweeted, Justin tweeted, why didn't we just get Wheezy instead of Imagine Dragons this whole time? Maybe they enjoyed his performance. And his attire at the same time. You never know. But, uh, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened there. So if you guys saw the game, I mean, what do you guys think? What does everybody think? Does everybody agree? Imagine Dragons are lame. And that... You know, who, Lil, what do you guys think about Lil Wayne's outfit as well? <laughs> I think it's great. It's good stuff. But, uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, Captain Marvel stuff. So, we saw a couple of trailers. I think apparently some were bad and some, and uh, we finally got a good one or something. That's what people were, I mean, that's what I'm reading around here. Uh, the trailers to Captain Marvel weren't so great. 
But I'm kind of excited about Captain Marvel the movie. It's coming out. On, it should be coming out on March seventh, I think seventh ninth around that week. And I'm actually pretty excited about Captain Marvel. Two couple reasons. Um, it's taking place in the nineties, so this is gonna be before Iron Man, the first Iron Man movie. If anybody, if you've all watched all the movies, I've seen all the movies, all the MCU universe movies and it's gonna take place before you know all that happens so she's kind of like the first hero technically from this universe and if she's supposed to meet Nick Fury I'm guessing that's what you see in a trailer like they're bumping heads like Nick Fury always does um plus another thing that I'm interested about is I feel like this is gonna this movie is going to set the path to the next 20 movies of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> you know, I, I'm pretty sure they have like 20 movies planned out. 20 more movies for the future. And uh, this is gonna, I think this is going to set the road to that. So we're going to finish, I think after this one, Endgame should come out. The Avengers Endgame. And then it's going to end at that arc and start a new one, which I feel like this will introduce the scrolls, the scrolls, 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 pretty much an invasion, the invasion, you know, that's what I feel like it's going to introduce. So that's going to be dope. Should be good. I don't know if I'll be around for all that time, but... <laughs> Jesus, what am I... Well, you never know. Knock on wood, man. Right? But, uh... Yeah, just because it takes place in the 90s, I feel like it's going to be interesting as well for me. Like, you haven't seen any movie of the Marvel's universe in that time. And the 90s were, like... I was born in the 90s. So I was a kid in the 90s, but I wasn't, like live in the 90s so much, you know, as an adult, but it's going to be cool to see a movie in the 90s, you know, and what else I have that I, oh, I feel like this is going to start the origin of the Avengers, so, yeah, I don't know what there, what else there is. To it, I don't think they pretty much said much about it, but I mean that's what I feel about like why I'm so excited to see Captain Marvel. Plus, she's gonna be like the first female superhero lead, lead superhero in her own standalone movie. Um, but what's interesting is Disney CEO wants to build a Captain Marvel land now, since the traders have come out. This is just this is just news right now. Like I just saw this today. So, what do you guys think about that? Um, I say he said it. See, it is a marvelous opportunity to bring even more of the character to theme parks, including her own. He took to social media to share the newest footage from the film and told fans to fasten their seatbelts for the ride. He also said he wants to build a Captain Marvel land, which we are totally down for. And as many rides, well, I feel like everybody's down for anything, right? <laughs> and as many rides, hotels, and ships as they could justify. Granted, it's all in fun, though we seriously shouldn't be adverse to a Captain Marvel land someday down the line. So yeah, he tweeted, fasten your seatbelts for a wide ride, hashtag Captain Marvel. I think we should build a Captain Marvel land and 50 Captain Marvel attractions. Plus, Captain Marvel cruise ships, hotels, restaurants, and parades. Well, he's going to go all out for Captain Marvel. Um, so what would it look like? Well, as landmarks, it would need an Alpha flight station as well as a Statue of Liberty apartment. And there would definitely need to be a chewy fine goose or two roaming around the park. We also need a coffee shop. And an alpha flight experience as well as a ride that makes you feel as if you're soaring through the cosmos or breaking. I think this is just like the uh, authors of this 
article. It could also be jet flying simulators and an, and an arena experience that has young face seen off against waves and waves of scrolls alongside Nick Fury. You know, the more we talk about this, the more we want. So hope it was okay. All right. So yeah, there you go. There could be a Captain Marvel land. But yeah, I'm pretty much excited about the movie. You know, I, I, I haven't seen too much of the trailers. Because trailers spoil everything for you. So I try to avoid spoilers at all costs. I mean, uh, I try to avoid uh, trailers at all costs before I watch a movie. But I am excited to see this movie. So that's that. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you uh, about Captain Marvel? Was good movie? What mo what other movies are you guys excited for? Uh, Twenty eighteen. That's it for Captain Marvel. Not much. Um. Shazam should be coming out this year. <laughs> Am I going to really list a bunch of movies? I'm not. Dark Phoenix, what is this? Oh, it's going to be a nice movie. All right, I was watching a video about <laughs> movies that are coming in 2019. But, all right, last thing I want to talk about. Something I saw in a tweet um, by Jordan Daly. Without naming your city, what is your city known for? That's the big question for today. How would you describe your city? Comment below. You know, not much to go about into that, so that's just that. Um, I didn't see too much on games, it's just like Overwatch announcing the second character as being gay, so it's something big right there. Uh, but not really huge news. Uh, something about Fortnite, so I'm not interested, but yeah, nothing much on gaming right now. Um, just a couple of small stuff like that. But yeah, without naming your city, what is your city known for? That is the question. Of this, of the of the Summit in twenty seven, but that is this is Summit in twenty seven. With that being said, um, thanks for staying through this whole couple of videos. I mean, this whole video duration. It's probably long. I was babbling for quite some time about some stuff. Um, but if you got any opinions, just comment below. You know, share the video, like it, do all the good stuff all that good stuff and remember to subscribe to the channel we are i am we are so used to that i am starting new stuff so um stay tuned for more content other stuff that i'm working on uh, you'll find out soon and i will be bringing back live streams but i'm not sure i'm not so sure like should i do live streams or video short video edited gaming videos you know what i mean so for now We'll try doing I'm gonna be doing live streams again, once again. And we'll see how it goes. From there, we'll just, you know, decide if there's more change that needs to be done. Um, so as, as we go on, things will change. So there you go. And uh, this one was a little awkward just because I'm starting back again. I know it was probably a little awkward. So I'm in 27. But that's only because I got back into it. And, <laughs> well, we gotta go back. To bring in the shot right uh, but yeah thank you and remember <laughs> just <a> remember <laughs> all right <laughs> it's out thanks